its host, Mark Majors of UX Pathways. We hope you enjoyed season one. I think the common thread was that you had to get out there, you had to do the work, and you had to figure out what was right for you. But why don't we hear it from all of our guests? One of the things that I feel is really different and is very, very, um, it's very good. It, it's different, but in a very good way is the fact that today user experience is recognized across uh, different sort of industries across the world as an area, as a discipline. And it's not just about, um, okay, well, you know, you come and just do a little bit of visualization for us. It's recognized as a value addition and hence the opportunities are immense. And so anyone who's thinking that, you know, this area interests me, but you know, what are the opportunities here? There's, there's been no better time so far in my journey than right now because of the demand and because of the fact that suddenly in the last year and a half because of the pandemic our lives you know the digital aspect of our lives has taken this enormous place in sort of how we live our everyday lives and that digitality if there is such a word is making it so important for the experiences to be designed by experienced designers. So it's a really, really good time to get in. If you want to be in the UX industry, if you want to be a designer, uh, the, the best way to do it is to, is to literally just go and do it. Um, and I, I say that, I know it sounds like I'm being dismissive, but it, you know, there's a lot of people that I've talked to that are like, oh, how do I want to focus on accessibility. I want to focus on, on user experience. But my job is this, like you need to find a way to make the job that you have or the things that you are doing, whether it's a job or it's volunteer experience or it's pro bono projects or whatever it is. If you really wanna go into this field, you have to find a way to connect the work that you are doing to the work that you wanna do. What I find is within large companies, uh, there there is a growing, there's there's not one um, hat, if you will. When I when I work across a lot of companies, it tends to fall in the marketing division, the marketing side of a lot of companies. Um, and there's usually somebody or hopefully a team of people that focus on globalization of content and strategy, and and then and then localization. And sometimes and so if you can get in, if you can work your way into that area you will that that is where the, the people when i do my consulting that's usually who i speak to more often they find your elders um and hang on to them you know really really uh <clears throat> look look at look at the original thinkers and the people who did if you're if you're going into user experience um you definitely need to, to be involved in accessibility you need to be involved in in markup, you need to know everything about the web. Usability really, really is not just about user interface design. Usability is a quality assurance process. And it means that you start day one and you iterate and you iterate. Some professions are more straightforward, right? Because if, if you want to be a doctor, there's a there's a pathway to become um, a heart surgeon, right? Um, for, for better or for worse, there's a pathway that you have to go through if you actually want to do heart surgery. And it's probably a good thing because I, I don't want I don't want just anybody taking a boot right. camp and then operating on me, right? Now, user experience isn't like that. I attribute it more to like the food industry, right? Where you have, you can go to school and become a master chef and go, th you know, be trained in all of the formal French cooking methods or whatever, right? That's one pathway to being, you know, to, to being a great chef, right? You could do that one. But there's also like lots of, you know, lots of Italian grandmothers who are awesome chefs too, who just picked it up through familiar methods and they have family recipes and, you know, they're just cooking at small scale. Some of them then open up a restaurant, which is great, but sometimes they're happy to just cook for their family every day with, with awesome food, right? Um, then you also have people that are like, like foodies and you know like they're actually they could be terrible at cooking but they're great at critiquing it and studying it and they're just passionate about it right so there could be people whose role is just you know so in our analogy right there's there's lots of people that i think are foodies that are just passionate about user experience and they that they're interested in it but it may not be their job every day there's other people that are like sous chefs right and they've just learned a little bit and they're they're beginning and they're moving up 
someone who wants to get into the field. So there's getting, there's, there's thinking about how do I basically create things that improve people's lives. And then there's getting a job in the industry. And those are two very different things. You know, it's, it's like, uh, um, mm -hmm. Uh, being the funny person amongst all your friends versus getting a job as a comedian. There, there's, uh, those are very different uh, uh, end results. And uh, so, you know, someone who wants to create experiences can, can just start doing that in the things they control, right? You can you can make a nice living space for your family. You can uh, uh, throw great parties. You can um, uh, build a website that has information that might be useful to other people that 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 folks would would love to come to. These days, there are so many tools out there that that you can use for free or for cheap. That that really, you can pretty much do anything you want at some level getting someone to pay you for it that's a whole different ball game because that involves marketing and sales and all sorts of other things if you're going to do it on your own or it involves working in a company where there are expectations and demands and they expect to have a level it's you know sort of like i can cook a nice meal for you and and you might enjoy it or i can open a restaurant those are two different levels of experience right it's a tough um, job market if you don't have experience yet. Um, so definitely networking. And even though that hasn't been my experience, they, they still say that knowing people and, and being aware of, of you as a candidate is a part of uh, finding work. So I always recommend that people, uh, you know, just make connections, take on, um, if, if you can, you know, do uh, work that can add to your portfolio, even if it's just, you know, in your free time and, you know, just slowly build that up so that you have work to show. Um, and, and certainly there are plenty of amazing programs out there, but you know, in my experience, it, it was tough to find something that would work with my, with my schedule. So that can be frustrating. And there are some boot camps, but you gotta be careful about the ones that you, that you look into and, and really vet and make sure that it's gonna be a worthwhile investment, that you're gonna get um, what you want out of it. Um, it's a great career and there's so many different things you can do and there's so many new opportunities. It's amazing. First of all, put on that UX hat and research your own journey and don't settle for anything less than a quality educational experience. I can't tell you enough stories about the people who come to me like privately on LinkedIn and say, hey, I took this Udemy course two years ago or hey, I went to this boot camp a year ago and check out my portfolio and I say, I'm sorry, but it looks like your your portfolio makes it look like you are not ready for a job. And they'll be like, well, what do you mean? I took the courses, I did the assignments, the boot camp said I was great. And I say, let's talk about my phases of proficiency model. When P UX is treated as building blocks, everybody is great. You, the building blocks are tools, Figma, Sketch. The building blocks are the lowest level of stuff. I spoke to people, you know, I interviewed a person. I ran a survey. Yeah, but did you do these well or did you just do them? Science and technique says, I did these with science and technique. I understand psychology and human behavior. I understand the foundations of UX principles. I understand these things and now I'm applying them. And I'm applying them in an environment where an expert can look at my work and go, you got that right, but I don't think you got that quite right. Let's take another look at that. If you are just getting rah, 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 you did a great job. You're going to find a job that is cheerleading. And that is not, you're not skilling up. And of course, at the oops, that's the upside down version. And that of course, at the top is, is strategy, but I don't expect people to be strategic about UX worker projects until they're about five years in. So you are trying to make sure you don't, don't end up in building blocks land, which is, well, I took a persona template and I filled in something I, I think I know about people. 
that's extremely common. You can face palm, but that's extremely common. And those people are sure they've done it right. I'm sure you have someone watching this right now going, that's not how you make a persona. Newsflash, it's not how you make a persona. But if you watch enough Udemy videos and YouTubers and, and bootcamp stuff, you think that if you just grab these templates and fill them out with our best guesses, we're doing the UX. My podcast talks about step-by-step -step evaluating yourself to see, well, first it defines what UX really is. Then, because a lot of people want to get into it and they don't realize it. And a lot of people find out the hard way what UX really is and find out, uh, this is not for me. And then they walk away. I try to help them be more grounded up front by defining what UX is. This is what the work is. We are not in the business of making things pretty. We're in the business of making things easy. We're in the business of finding wins for users, wins for the business, marrying the two, and then making it work for everyone. And that, that, that's what we do. We're problem finders, problem solvers. And, and, and a lot of people don't like to find problems. They don't like to solve problems. They, they found out that after all of the articles that came out about how this is the up and coming things, UX, they, oh, I want a piece of that. And then somebody started saying that it's easy. And so that's when you get the floods of people. This is not easy work. That's why it's called work. I mean, for one, <laughs> but <laughs> they get a little rim shot on there, but the, <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's challenging work. It, it's work that requires a certain persona. And that's what I talked about in, the, in all those episodes. Are you really, I mean, everybody can't be a doctor. Everybody can't be a lawyer. Everybody can't be a plumber. You think that people want user experience because that's what they say. We want a great user experience. But at the end of the day, they're really not going to welcome you. With, uh, you it, I won't say that. There are very few organizations that I think um, truly understand what it takes to have a good user experience. Um, people want the end result, but there's a process that it takes to get there. And that's what uh, Jesse James Garrett's book meant to me. It's defining that process. You know, what you see on that surface level, that's the result of all the other work that you've done to get to that space. And um, for me, just constantly educating. Um, I'm not a graphic designer, so the UI component escapes me. Uh, you know, I, I'm more concerned about a solid structure and ensuring that the proposed design that we have fits the needs of our users. And in order to do that, my focus is completely understanding the users, um, understanding each market segment that we are catering to, so that's why the research is so important to me because I need to be able to understand that where whatever application we're developing, there are no gaps for that specific user type. What really differentiates people, uh, sort of candidates, if you want to get that job, uh, just it's a handful of things. Number one, know the history, understand where UX came from, its, its roots in psychology and engineering and design and human factors. And there's a number of books on that. If you're even familiar with a handful of those common books, probably uh, like I mentioned, Jacob Nielsen and Don Norman, get to know some of the lingo. If you know what a prototype, a persona, an affordance, what is design thinking? What, you know, what is the uh, what is a journey map? We every industry has its own jargon. If, if when you're training and you hire somebody, the first three to six months sometimes is just what does this term mean? What does that term mean? And of course, there's business terms, but there's all these specific UX terms. But you put yourself a leg ahead if you know what those really mean and actually have actually done those methods mm -hmm. as well. I think understand some of those fundamental concepts. Number three, um, what are the fundamental concepts of user research? It's really an early focus on users and tasks, iterative design and empirical measurement. And this has been talked about since the 1980s. There's a handful of key articles that talk about that. Um, if you can master, you know, understanding the methods in the terms of one thing, two, just getting a little bit of experience, having run just one usability test with 10 participants, will differentiate you from so many people because you'll know what's involved in seeing people that are doing things that you didn't expect, interacting, collecting that data and synthesizing that. That is a learning experience for you to see if this is something you wanna do and it helps differentiate you from, from candidates, but also learn the roles. 
there's a, there's a, a, a very much a distinction between designing uh, and research, and, and now what we're, we're often seeing between UX research ops. Those are distinct uh, uh, jobs with a distinct type of, um, uh, of roles and training and, and particular um, behaviors and skills that you're going to have in each of those. The interesting thing I would say, just as general advice on, on where the world is today, is, is of course you can start your career as a traditional U, UI or UX developer for sure. But, you know, the great thing about UX design is there's no one way of doing it. There's no, there's no one pathway into getting uh, into it. And so it's possible that any discipline can lead to the road to success. Uh, for UX design. So, and, and, there's, and there's also a lot of roles that can lead to UX design that aren't necessarily obviously design roles. So, you know, if, for example, project management is, is your way to go, uh, you know, maybe as a project owner who is very design savvy, you can, you can excel at that. So you're not necessarily uh, doing the design work, but you're driving the design work and you could, you're able to lead your team better because you're UX design savvy. That's a way, um, you know, in terms of content, you know, the, the content creators who are UX design savvy uh, have kind of a natural pathway into the UX design field. I was thinking, you know, even something like tech support, you know, tech support is like a gold mine of UX data uh, that is not entirely clearly exploited. You know, the, the tech support people have the direct contact with the customers. They understand customers extremely well. You know, if you happen to be a tech support type or have a tech support type role and you're interested in UX design, it's entirely possible that you could leverage that role into a UX field simply by understanding your customers better than everyone else. Once again, we hope you enjoyed season one. Excited about season two and many more guests on this path of UX. Once again, thank you for subscribing to UX Pathways.